Hey guys, this is Andre with the Fastlane Truck, and with me is Nick Kappa from Ram Truck. Hey Nick, how are um, you doing? So you know, I've never ran a snowplow before. Oh. Can you sh teach me well, how to do this? Today is your lucky day. Okay. You're behind the wheel of a 2015 Ram 2500. Okay. And it's set up with a big straight plow on it. Okay. It's about a 700 to 1,000 pound plow, Whew. and it has the remote right here. So uh, first things first, let's talk about a couple things that you need to know about plowing, right? Okay. First of all, the plow system itself, the blade has a protection system on it. Okay. So if you strike something hard enough, it'll actually buckle and let you know. At the end of each plow, at the end of the plow blade on both sides, we actually have markers so you can see what the plow is doing. It gives you an idea yep. of where antennas. it is. Yeah. Yeah, antennas where it, where it is and what it's doing. And that's always a good thing too. So there's protection for left to right and there's protection forward and back too. Okay. Grab a hold of this controller and put it in your hand to where you can do shifts on the column and grab the wheel with it at okay. the same time. Or maybe you want to make adjustments. So the idea is to have it in a, in a position on your hands to where you can function the plow controls, okay. the buttons right there, and also be able to make shifts forward backwards. Because when you're plowing, you're doing a lot of forward and backward movement. And here are the buttons. We have an on off switch and left, right, and up and down. You got to end them. Yeah, nice. up and down. So let's pl practice moving with the plow and figure it out. So how it it's works down out. right now. It is correct? down. Right. Is, is, is the blade on? No. Okay, turn on. Okay. That's on. Go ahead and play with it a little bit and figure out how it works. Okay, now I can tell it's up. So you got up. Uh, you got left and right. It's all hydraulic. Okay. So one of the coolest functions of the newer plows is a double tap to bring it into float mode. So go ahead and double tap down. You see how it's red now, the button? Okay. It tells you it's in float mode. Oh, that see. means that the plow's weight is what's holding it to the ground right now. So as the truck's moving up and down over a bumpy section, the plow can freely move up and down with the weight. And, and it's, it's done heavy. automatically. Okay. Yeah, it, it just it okay. moves freely with the weight okay. only. Now the plow itself is sitting on pucks, so the pucks are adjustable to be able to allow you to be able to figure out how far down you want to cut. Now, right now we have them pretty well adjusted to get a really nice clean cut and we're okay. working with a really even surface. But if you're working with an uneven surface or something that maybe has, I don't know, an inch or two holes here and there, you'll probably want the cut pucks to be a little bit higher. A lot okay. of people cut with no pucks at all and they just run on the edge of the blade, but that takes a lot of experience. So for okay. us today, the right. purpose of being able to learn how to do it, we run nice. on pucks. Okay, so if I want to turn around, I need to bring the plow up. You correct? got it. Let's All bring right. the blade up. All right. So something else too, while you're driving down the road, you want to make sure that the plow is angled to the right. So right. you have okay. the right side tucked in and then the blade's up. That does two things for you. One is if you catch something on the edge of the blade, it doesn't damage the plow or the truck while you're at speed traveling from one place to another. Mm -hmm. Also, it allows air to flow into the grill of the truck. And cooling is very important when you're running that, that heavy makes trucks and you're plowing. So you see on the dash right now, you have a different adjustments for that cluster screen. For this situation and the work you were doing, we have the temperature for the transmission in display. We'll so see. that allows you to be able to see what you're doing. You're sitting at about 150 degrees right now on the temperature, which is normal. Which is good, fine. yeah. Yeah. So now you're lining up and okay. you're trying to figure out what cut you're gonna make. Okay. And you're, you know what, you gotta pay attention to the type of material you're moving. If it's, if it's thick or, or wet snow, or if it's fluffy snow, or if it's like this, which is basically moving a bunch of boulders. They're, they're really, this is hard snow. Yeah, We're in negative packed. 20, negative 30 degree weather. These, these snowballs are, are not just light fluffy. They don't break easily. Mm -hmm. So you got to keep that in mind when you're moving the blade because the truck and the blade can only push so much material at one time. Obviously, in four-wheel drive mode, yeah, right? Absolutely. You can and use four high or four low, okay. um, depending on what you're doing. If you're moving slow, four low is really good for being able to hold the torque. Uh, sometimes you'll get a little bit of wheel hop with it because of the amount of torque okay. you're getting. The traction depends on the environment. So four I can just double, so I can double tap to bring it down. And we're in four high right now. Yeah. Okay. Now for this first pass, just take it slow and easy. Okay. 
way. There's a lot of snow. I mean, there's like a couple of feet there, right? Yeah, a couple of feet. There's probably, there's sections where there's a foot, foot and maybe a little more than a foot, but yeah. Like the section coming up here. Yeah, that's pretty thick. Hey, it's going through okay, a pretty... pick up the blade. Okay. Now stop. Okay, All what I want way. you to do now, yeah, go ahead and stop here. Okay. What I want you to do now is um, flatten out the blade. I want you to back up. Okay. See now you use your right hand, right? Keep one hand on the wheel. That okay. way, you, that way, that's why you're holding the remote with the extra fingers okay. so you get the rim. So go ahead and back up. Um, if you're removing a lot of material at one time, or you're you're hitting heavy snow, you'll want to get some forward momentum before dropping the blade. That'll okay. help you continue on and, okay. and, and help the truck and you get work done quicker. That was a pretty badass plow there, gentlemen. <laughs> we were reminded that the rocks, or the, the ice, becomes yes. boulders yeah, at yeah. that speed. <laughs> How was oh, that, Andre? Yeah, that was quick. So the blades actually have protection systems on them so that if you overload them or hit something or strike something hard, there's a protection in place to stop that from it so that there's no damage incurred to the truck or the plow. These heavy duty springs you see right here, or if the blades drop to the ground, you strike something sharp like a manhole cover or ice or, or just something hard, a rock, whatever, a curb, the whole blade will buckle forward and save the plow, save it from itself. Also, if you have it angled like this and you strike something on the side that's raised or out, it'll also fold back and there's a back pressure that throws all the hydraulic fluid back into the reservoir, saving the plow again. So it's important to have those safety systems because a lot of times when you're plowing, you don't know what's underneath it. You don't know what's underneath the snow that you're plowing, and unless you're really familiar with the area that you're plowing, then it doesn't really make sense to move with something that doesn't have any kind of protection in play. We put 500 pounds in the bed over the rear axle to try to do it, because it's not only do you have 700 to 1,000 pounds sitting on the front, it's also hanging off, so it has an exponential factor of leverage. Something else you need to make and pay attention to. Not all snow is the same. Some snow is nice and fluffy. This is more like a rock. So when you're moving material, you need to make sure you understand that you're moving different types of material. Sometimes it's lighter snow, fluffier snow, you can take a bigger bite. But when it's snow like this and we're dealing with negative 20 degree or negative 30 degree conditions, they tend to rock up and turn into, you know, more than crisp cookies. They're more like rocks than they are the light fluffy stuff that we all snow and ski on. Something else you notice too is they put an extra set of lights on here. And the reason they do that is because, well, the headlights for the normal truck just aren't going to work past the blade. When you're traveling down the road, you want to make sure the blade's cocked out. That allows airflow to go to the grill to cool the truck. Also, if you're cocked out on the left-hand side is how you're going to run it. You're going to run it actually the opposite direction you see it here. If you catch something on the side here, it's not going to do damage to the truck or the plow. More than 80% of the public who use or snow, do snow removal are using a heavy-duty truck. And the reason for that is you want you want the wider track, you want the, the heavier weights, you want the more durable transmission, you want to be able to have a front gower, a front weight capability for the truck to be able to hang a big plow like this off because when it really comes down to it, most of the people moving snow are doing it for commercial reasons and the idea is to move a lot of material by the hour. Hey Nick, people say that after you plow the truck it's pretty much useless, is that true? No, not at all. <laughs> you haven't heard that? No, I haven't heard that at all. I've heard that. And I see, I think a lot of times people buy trucks because they have plow kits already on them. 